Hi guys and welcome to another Divi Theme Basics video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're going to have a look at using backgrounds with the Divi Theme. So I'm going to enable the Visual Build. And if I go down we've got a section, the blue tab. I've got a row which is the green tab. And we've got modules, the dark tabs. And we can add backgrounds to all of these they've all got the same options. So if I open the section up under the content tab you'll find background here. At the moment I've got a background. The first tab that you'll see is a colour. So of course you can use any colour you want for the background there. And you may see this modules changing colour in the background. It's because we've got a bit of a colour in that one but it's got some opacity to it so we're seeing through. That's the reason that one's changing colour when I change colours here. So of course you can have a colour. The next tab is a gradient. If you want to add a gradient. Defaults blue and green. Make it any colour you want. With gradient backgrounds you can also change them from linear which is in a straight line from one to the other to radial which means it'll emanate one colour from the middle I move this down out of the way a little bit and one colour on the outside and with both linear and gradial you can change the start and stop positions to have more of one colour or more of another you can see the blue expanding there and if you drag the other one all the way across you can actually segregate the colours completely so you've got a completely two colours there if you need to you can place the gradient above an image background and I'll show you blending in a moment. So I'll just take that one away we'll, back, we'll be back to the colour. Got a colour there remember. Next one is image. That's just adding an image to the background here. As you can see we've got an image. What I'll do is I'm going to go in and take that box shadow away from there because it's a little bit distracting. So let's just save that. We've got our image in the background and we'll come back to that image and show you the different settings in a moment. I'm just going to take this box shadow away from our last video we, we did. There we go. Okay, so let's go back where we were in the section, content, background, and we were in the image. Once you've added your image, you've got various options. I'm going to leave the parallax till last. As long as you've got parallax switched off, you'll see these down below cover, center, no repeat, normal. I like mine to cover or you can make it fit if it's a strange shape or you can make it the actual size of the image if you want to do that. Cover usually works for me in most situations and you can decide whether to have it in the center of the image, top left, center right, however you want, put it where you want it. Now if it's a small image and you want it to repeat you can set it on repeat. For instance, if I change that back to fit, you can see it's repeating itself several times there. Now a really interesting one, if I put this back to no repeat and cover, is background image blend. Now you may remember we put a purple colour in as the background. And what we're about to do will also work with the gradient. So we've got a colour, remember that. If we go down to the background image blend, you can click on it and you can multiply the background purple colour with the actual image. You can get some wonderful effects. And they've got some fantastic things here. If you go through and have a look at them, you can get some amazing effects going. But remember, you can only use this blend feature if you're not using parallax. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off by going to normal here. Let's take a look at parallax now. If I flip this on, you'll see it says true parallax there. And true parallax is means that when we roll our site downwards, that image is going to roll down at a different speed. So you've got two things moving at a different speed there. If I do it slower, I'm sure you can see that. Now if I flip it over to CSS Parallax, this is also known as Fixed Background. Now if I roll down, you'll see that that image is staying exactly where it is and our foreground is moving over the top of it. Okay, well I'm going to take that image away now. And I'm also going to take the colour background away. 
And the last one that we've got here is a video background. So let's grab a little video from somewhere. It's a great site called Pet Cells. And let's have a look at videos. And let's grab the first one we see there. When you're using videos, you want to bear in mind size is important. You want to try and keep it really low in the file size. As we're using a native video, we're going to upload it to our site here. So what you can do is click on the video. And up here, you'll find a little arrow. And you can download it in the smallest size possible for what you're going to use it for. So I'm going to use a smaller one there. I'm going to hit free download. As you can see, it's downloaded to the bottom of the browser there. Let's go back to our site. I'm going to go over to video background this time. And here's a little MP4. I've uploaded an MP4. So you hit that. You can just drag this up. I've already got one there. So I'm going to use the one that I've got, which is the same one. Say upload to video. And as you can see, it's uploaded that video background. Another thing to bear in mind with video backgrounds, a lot of mobile devices will not support them. So tablets, maybe, mobiles, unlikely. So what you want to do in that case is make sure you've got a fallback image and you can do that by putting an image in or even a fallback color. Something that if the video is not loading properly, it's going to show them something. OK, well, let's go back to our video now. If your video is a strange ratio or something like that and it's not displaying correctly, it's too wide or too deep, you can roll down a little bit and type in the correct height and width for it down below here. But most of these seem to work straight out of the box. It's not a bad idea to have your video pause when another video plays, just less resources on your server. And it's a great idea to have it not playing when it's not in view. That way, load times will be a lot quicker. So that's pretty much it with backgrounds. And like I say, you can do these to sections, rows, or individual modules. If I go in here, let's just give that a darker background so we're not seeing so much of the see through there. So again, it's going to be in content and background. And let's give it a black background. Take a bit of the opacity down. We can see a hint of those waves behind, something like that. So there you go, guys. There's how to use backgrounds with a Divi theme. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.